talk about now, gentlemen in the panel and our audience here. What's the road forward? We're going to go to questions a little bit later. What's the road for? What's your ideal world, Jim? My ideal, ideal world is that the people who are bankrupt go bankrupt and fail. The way it's supposed to work. Wait, Jim, Peter, wait. Okay, the way it's okay. supposed to work is people who, who fail, fail, and then competent people come in, take over the assets, reorganize, and start over. What's happening now in the West is the government is taking the assets away from the competent people giving them to the incompetent people and saying to the incompetent people, now you can compete with the competent Very people with their money. Let me give you an example. That's terrible Let me give you an example. A very simple economics. example we all can understand. In Iceland, beginning of the financial yes. crisis, very interesting story. A woman that ran a boutique had a good job. She was an independent entrepreneur. And within a month, she was wiped out and bankrupt. Right. And she said, I did nothing wrong. And she's right. Okay. No, and the they, system punished her. No, she didn't. No, but wait, she you played know by what, the rules. But what happened, she played by the rules. What happened in Iceland was then the Icelanders said, we're not going to bail out the banks. To hell with them. Let them go bankrupt. And they refused to pay. The, the Iceland and when people they were said, given we're given not going to bail out the banks. And the banks Let's, failed. Let me go back to that story. What did she do wrong? She did nothing wrong. Yeah, she did nothing wrong, but she lived with it. Uh, I don't know what the, the, the woman from Iceland, but I certainly know about the stories about the Americans who had housing that was very good, and the banks told them, you can upgrade. And by the way, the money's free. This is not about the basics to live. This is purely facilitating living beyond your means. Yes. That, that is the problem. And I am arguing, and I, I wish the Americans all their best, and, and you know, capitalism is not just about companies. It's a much wider spectrum of things because it's meant to deliver on prosperity. In Asia, if we go down that route where we say you can have everything and there's no controls, it'll be catastrophic. And the science is very clear. There's not enough to go around. So what is the medium to which we reach this? And I'm always fascinated that people from the West think we need to emulate the, the, the West. We can't. And therefore, your question is right. How do you say you can't? Okay, Arthur, what's the model you want? What's your ideal world? Okay, Jim has if his. I, if I uh, hear correctly, the other side of the panel, they're saying, yes, capitalism goes through booms and busts, and let's regulate it so that it doesn't really go boom, it doesn't really go bust, and it's some road in the middle. But role in the middle is always mediocre. What my uh, version of capitalism, at least how you see it, is creative egoism. Right? This is the individuals who can succeed in things they want to see in life, and they don't have barriers. Is, there, is there any social responsibility attached the to that? The social responsibility is up to the individual person. If he no. pays taxes, he will... So you can, you can just opt out? Yes. You don't care? Well, yes. Let me give you an example. You can be a businessman in this part of Russia and just say, you know, I can make money by cutting down the forest. Because the state has said that forest is protected. So there are rules all the time. I totally agree with you. We need entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not against capitalism, but there are rules for, to protect the public good. Individuals don't do that. Only the state does that. And that's what needs to be done. We cannot weaken the state, but I'm not suggesting we have authoritarian states either. This is the clever discussion should be, we should be having, not about Mao and Stalin and Ronald Reagan. That was 20th century. Frank, jump in. You know, I'm a fan of austerity. In, in this sense, I support uh, Angela Merkel, for example. And may, not many people actually support her I anymore do, in do, Europe. So authority is important. I think we have to reduce costs. I think it's really much uh, what you might want, Jim. But then uh, we have to think about growth initiatives. I think just cutting costs is not enough. And I tell you what, you know, young people in Europe, many young people in Europe have no ambitions. They're just lazy. Right. Why? Did the system do that to them? I think the system, you know, because for State many years we just did that. kind of sleep like in a social hammock, right, all the social goodies. And this we have to stop. Here yeah, I'm a true capitalist. <laughs> but uh, then we have to give them ambitions, ideas, a future. And that's what the state has to do, right? And, and giving them, you know, the divisions uh, for the future. Well, I mean, to be fair, isn't unemployment an, an incentive? I mean, kind of echoing Jim there? Environment. Environment to create jobs. Environment in which the entrepreneurship can prosper. Yeah, I and fully yes. agree. I fully agree. Creating the system where entrepreneurs can, you know, build a business. Okay, let's be more concrete. Give me some points here. About what? How to improve it. How to fix it. Well, I, I would say, you know, I think that the difficulties in Europe and the US are born out of a historical sense of entitlement and privilege. I think in Asia we're going to have to do two things in my view. The first one is we need to start understanding that resources need to be priced properly. Secondly, without 
accusing me of being a socialist. We need to put collective welfare simply ahead of individual rights. The Japanese practice that, by Ooh. the way. But this how are you going to price? Japan. <laughs> Did you see Jim's face on <laughs> that one? <laughs> how are you going to price resources? So United Nations will, 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 one at a time, Jim. You keep saying these things have to be done. Who's going to price the, the resources? You or no, the market? Let me, let me, the no, market is going to do well, a better I mean, job than on. you. The market failure, I mean, I don't need to argue with people that markets fail. So Moscow okay. is going to do it. So, sorry? The, you know, the you, Soviets you, are going to do it. There are institutions. There are institutions. There are institutions. I mean, the United States, imagine if you didn't have the EPA. We didn't have the EPA for a long time and the and, country but, survived. And are you saying that today the United States would be better without the EPA? On record? Yes. Yeah, yes, I am who's, saying who's, that. Now, you, who said you're yes? Just, you're Why? distorting. Wait, stand you're, up. Get a microphone well, hold on. Here. You're, you're, a microphone distorting, here. you're distorting the EPA. Yes. I know what the No, but PR. it's about regulation we and have government control. We got it. We, I want that. participation from the audience. Please, sir, stand up. What's your well, name? We, Scott Taylor. We were refiners without the EPA for a lot of years till what, the early 70s. I think it's just a, a government organization that imposes increased uh, burdens on the on business and the, the, the free market. In the end, that ends up hurting the very consumers that it's intended to protect. How does it hurt the consumer? It's hurting the it consumer. It's, it's, it's hurting, dioxide it's hurting, 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 hurting the consumer. It's hurting the consumer with the uh, current uh, mileage, you know, cafe standards, where it's driving the internal combustion engine into obscurity. So it's it's going to remove it from our lives and remove a tremendous. Okay, well, we're of getting to a growth. really good point here, and is it's really fundamentally what is the role of the state here? Yes. Now, so many people don't want any role whatsoever. And, you know, and, and, and Jim and I will probably could argue with each other until we're blue in the face about, you know, what kind of regulation caused the crash. My view is not enough. You probably you would know, say too much. The problem was the government. The government was caused the problem. This central bank yeah, in America. The government and the business community on, so on. tied Peter, together, Peter, Jim. They're Peter. the same thing. No, the government, the, the central bank in America refused to let people go bankrupt. They kept printing money and bailing people out so that people were buying four homes, four houses about with the no auto job industry, and no the money auto down. Industry. What? Were you for the bailing out the auto industry? No, of course not. The, the auto, I wouldn't bail out anybody. I wouldn't even bail out you, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> not even you, Peter. <laughs> and not even me. I wouldn't bail out me. I wouldn't bail, I wouldn't you bail, bail out, out your kids, though. No, that's I wouldn't for sure. bail out yeah. the automobile industry, the insurance industry, the banking industry. All of these industries were bailed. Karl Marx must be singing in his grave because America, <laughs> America went and bailed out everybody. That's and what, and, left, it, and but, left it empty. Okay. You know, I see Frank, Frank, go ahead. Come on, let's have a discussion. I see a growing diction of uh, even like civil war in some countries, right? We have rich men like, like you, like us, right? And then we have the poor people on the street. Look into Europe, right? There are a lot of protests, strike, airlines don't function anymore. And uh, what we really need is a strong state. We don't, we don't need more government. We need better government. Wait, in Europe, usually, we have a four-year election circus, right? The government comes in. Did you say circus year, or cycle? Cycle, yeah. Oh, four, I thought four. you said circus. Oh, okay. oh, 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 circus, okay. actually a circus. So basically, the government comes in and a uh, lot of promises in the first year. In the second year, a bit of change. In the third year, kind of a standstill, you know, because re-election time starts. In the fourth year, it's campaigning. So nothing is moving, right? And there's no... Good government. You say that's the reason in China and Russia we prefer different. We model. prefer the Russian to Chinese. Okay, go system. ahead. Come right. on, tell us more. Okay. We want stability. We want stability for the businesses to prosper and less regulation. Okay. I'm not saying there is a lot of less regulations in Russia and America. Not at all. But this is something that we need to improve. Okay. Let me let me just go. I'll go back to what I know a bit more of, which is Asia. I'll just compare the two largest nations in Asia, China and India. One is democratically elected, capitalist, free markets maybe not operating as well. One is more state-run with capitalism as well. Which country has delivered greater on, the on lifting people up? The Chinese system has. Of course, right? the Chinese. But because it has a strong state, it doesn't take anything for granted, and it does guide. My God, have you ever tried to do business in India? Nobody can do business in India because point. the government is it's everywhere. My it's my point. It's my point. You, can, you, cannot be a, you cannot be an entrepreneur in India unless you're in bed with the government. That's, no, that's the that's only true. way you can do that's business. That's true, and that's my point. So this is the, your, your question is, do we need a strong state? My point is, you need a strong state, and the Chinese system works because it's a strong state. No. The Indian system doesn't work because it's a weak state. No, it's a strong... The, the Chinese system works because they let all these people do what they want to. No. The government couldn't keep up no, with them. No, but the Chinese government is very clear about what you can and can't do. Oh, please. 
please. As I said before, clear. they call themselves communists, but they're fantastic capitalists. They are, and that's the form where okay, the Chinese I, government decided to... It doesn't really matter what you call the party then. But no. you need okay. a strong that's state. That's one of the, the problems But you can't here. have the Tea Party have running state. in China. Frank, come on, <laughs> jump in. Not about the Tea Party. I think that's not a comment we'd like to make. But uh, talking about um, good governance, I think we have just mediocre governments in, in Europe. I can only talk about Europe. I won't comment about Malaysia, China, Russia, or the US. And uh, what we maybe need is a new system of just getting the best into power. Maybe getting the entrepreneurs in power, entrepreneurs also running governments. Oh, maybe Romney. Could be. Oh, my God. No, okay. you need to have people who can make decisions. The problem in Europe is that there are people running the countries who can't make decisions. In China, there are people in charge who can make decisions. In India, not. That's right. Tough government. Maybe we should just have a state that has just basic requirements and leave it at that, yes. okay? Just a basic yes. safe, safety Hallelujah. net. Hallelujah. Is that enough for you, Jim? I would say yes. You have a, a, so a you agree with schools and a fire department and a few other I'm things? I'm sure schools. I don't know if I'd agree with schools. No, not every school. America, America, private schools are doing pretty America well. became a great country when it didn't have public schools. It would have private schools. Every, nobody had an automatic right to go to school in the 19th century in America. If you had enough money, your kids went to school. You didn't have to pay but don't you think it should be a right now to go to school? Well, of course, I think everybody should, but the state gov uh, education in America is a disaster. You understand that American kids are not even in the top 20 in anything on international tests, and America spends four times what the number two country does on education? You think that's a good system? I think oh it's an God, awful Peter. system, okay? Of course awful it's an system. awful system. Well, but education one, I agree. Uh, second, of course, infrastructure. And the third very important point, culture. I think culture is extremely important. We only talk about money here. We talk about capitalism. But we should also give theaters, symphony orchestras, music to the people. I think it's really a task of the government. I mean, my, well, my view is that capitalism... I think capitalism allows Chinese, uh, 1.3 billion Chinese, to have a dream to have a car. We can choose not to have a car. I think that's the point I support, Jim. Smart. Yes. Who else here? Who else here? Come yes. On. Good point. Good point. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name's Tom Wheelwright. I'm a former Australian senator. I've been living for the last 12 years on rice and low tax. I'm presently living in Singapore, but I'm going home at the end of the month. Um, where did you get this idea that morality had anything to do with an economic system? Okay. Nowhere in the wealth of nations did Adam Smith ever say greed is good. I defy you to show me the page. What he did say was that Morality is not a very useful way of looking at an economic system. Sandra, morality is a very morality, good. Let's keep it short. Let's keep it short. That's morality is that. a sense of right and wrong, and your parents teach you that, not the economic system. Yes. Sorry, but the wealth of nations, the wealth of nations was written by Scotsman who lived about 250 years ago. He lived at the centre of the empire. Why should the rest of us be following his edicts? Secondly. Wait. He never went to India or China or Asia, didn't understand the world. Thirdly, wait, wait a minute, you saying wrote, that nobody had on, any hang brains? On, hang on, hang on, Jim. Hang he on. wrote a book called The Theory of Moral Sentiments too. But the economists very conveniently tend to ignore all of that. And the, and the Wealth of Nations does talk a lot about morality too. Are you saying that Just nobody had any brains unless he wrote in 2020? No, no, not at all. But 200 years later, we're still, we're still just Referring to Adam Smith, come we on. We still read Plato, we read Socrates. No, that's not, that doesn't mean, but economists, <laughs> but ec economists still seem to just refer to Adam Smith. That's irrelevant. The world is and Karl Marx. Okay, let's Marx. Let's forget Karl Marx. Let's go, Frank, let's go, Frank, Karl Marx. Frank, Frank, uh, Karl Marx. Go ahead. Even maybe I should, uh, as he is actually a fellow And Mahatma Gandhi citizen. said different things. But, but you know, I would like to mention one uh, great thinker. It's uh, Machiavelli, uh, who is Italian. <laughs> and uh, he basically said, uh, the end justifies the means. And basically, you can always point your finger on somebody. There's no morality in the system. It's like a tit for tat. It's like a zero sum game. I think what we really need to do, maybe it's my um, just two pennies in a nutshell, how to save capitalism, is to give up this Machiavellian mindset and go for a, um, a win win situation. Um, basically, a positive sum well, game. I guess that's what it gets down to. Maybe, you know, as we, as we wind this down, can we have a win win situation? I'll come first. Can we if have a win win? If you increase the pie, if you increase the pie, if you have the pie which you, you have to divide, there's always somebody going to lose. If you increase the pie, if you increase consumption, increase uh, demand, increase supply, yes, then you can.
Okay. Uh, sorry, but win-win is utopian hubris. Someone wins, others lose. Well, wait a minute. Wait Not necessarily. necessarily. If How do you balance it out? If the, the standard, point. if the world economy improves, sure. more people are better off. That's win-win. That's not win-win. Wait a minute, who loses? The people who, in China. In China, no, on, 200 million people now have running water. Is that lose? Who I lost? Didn't, I didn't say that. But the what cost, did you say? Well, hang on. The cost of economic power, uh, economic growth in China, uh, following the current model, has created a huge cost to others. The Chinese what, what government has cost? Sorry, what, 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 what you're referring to? I'm, I really don't understand what kind of costs. Yeah, who? The environmental cost for people living on the periphery has been huge. And the Chinese government are the first to acknowledge that this has been significant. And they are taking huge attempts to try and address this. They know that they had unrestrained growth. It has come at a huge price. They have to t completely look at things in a different so way. So you're saying that everybody in China should go back to 1978 before I Deng Xiaoping said, said... I never said Deng that. Deng Xiaoping said, this is not working. Jim, let's try something. All right, gentlemen, let's keep, keep the audience... I want to keep the audience engaged. Sir, give your name, please, and a quick question. Yes, I'm Mateus van Gallen from Canada, and I just have had a question in my mind for some time. Uh, you've been speaking a lot about letting businesses fail, but in the current situation, uh, you could almost say countries have just as significant effect. What situation, what do you believe when it comes to countries? Should we let them also fail, such as Greece, Spain, Portugal, or Iceland? Yeah, do, do you treat, do you treat sovereign the, countries as a company? Jim? Let them go the bust. I would let make them go the, bust here. Okay. I would make the point that in Iceland, they let them fail. Iceland failed, and now Iceland since then has been one of the most rapidly growing, prosperous countries in Europe. Estonia, the same thing. They failed, and they have boomed since. Sweden, 20 years ago, they failed. And yet now it has been booming. Argentina. If you, if you look at Japan, they refuse to let people fail. It's 22 years later, and Japan has lost two decades. That way does not work. You let countries fail, and then they start over. Okay. That's the way the system That's why is supposed they won't to work. I, th I guess they, it's, the, Greece is all about saving the euro, not saving the Greek people. I think you can't let countries fail. I think uh, I'm European, a true European, even so I'm based in Switzerland, and we are always very critical when it comes to Brussels. But uh, we have to show solidarity to the other European countries. You just can't say that countries like Germany, the UK, Sweden take advantage in terms of you know, the strong exports, and the, the um, uh, not as strong countries will fail. I think we have to help them. It's a bit of solidarity. Maybe it's not very capitalist in, in the thinking. I, I want to ask you know, as a, as a philosopher, basically, Sorry. Thomas Hobbes said, you know, man is a man's wolf. When you're born, basically, you are bad. I don't agree with this view. I think when we are born, we are good people. Okay. And we should uh, always try to give back. All right, gentlemen, Frank, I want to ask so all of you, no, I want to ask you, what about austerity? Is this the century of austerity? I have to Artem tell Frank first. that Go the ahead, Soviet Union failed. This is, this is not, this is not, Father austerity reasons. is not sure. a solution. I would completely agree with Jim. If Greece would go, would have gone bust two years ago, it would have been much better right now. Yes. But I, going I, bust, I what does it mean? You have social unrest, you have thousands of people on the street, have nothing to eat. Today, when you go to a doctor in Greece, you have to pay in cash because the social insurance system is not working anymore. People are failing, people are miserable. So Frank, people what are is Ill. your solution? What is your solution? That I'm supposed to pay for the Greeks? Not you, you're American. Who's going to pay me? You? <laughs> me, I, Europeans. Yeah, you're going to pay for bleed the, the rich. We'll bleed the rich. Bleed the rich. And start writing but checks. Not uh, at infinitum, if, but if we have Greece to support would have left the euro, it would gone back to the drachma, they would devaluate the currency, since it would be really cheap, and would have a flow of European tourists going to Greek islands. You'll have perfect economy there. They won't let I mean, Greece it seems leave. To me, in Greece, we are saying, hey, the patient's sick, what we, do we do? The big question is, how do we make sure people don't get critically ill? That's the question. So where, how did Greek get to where it is? It's extreme forms of overspending, suggesting to people they can have everything. Yeah. My view is in this part of the world, we should, that is the extreme form of capitalism. Extreme. We should not allow capitalism. overspending by the government. The reason Greece is now where it is, is because of overspending by the government. The U.S. is where it is because of overspending by who? Government too. No, the U.S. should fail too. The U.S. will yeah. fail, don't worry. But it wait, it and, has and failed. The, the world capital. doesn't fail. I want to keep capitalism. going back to our audience here. Sir, please stand up. Give us your name. I'm Andrei from Moscow, Russia. What do you think about the idea that capitalism system will be successful in case the states will be um, the main capitalists? Uh, in that fact, uh, state will decrease taxes and more shareholders will, would be federal agencies and everything will be okay. 
Okay. It still de depends on what kind of state we want. Yeah, what I kind think. of state? The, the, the Union of Socialist so the Union of Soviet Socialist no, Republics. People Republic of China. Uh, in People's Republic of China, state is one of the shareholder in many, many uh, enterprises. Right, I know, but they're selling them off. They're selling them off and they're letting the market take, take over. But this is nothing wrong with that. State is working as a good capitalist in China. It's increasing its wealth. It's making money to feed all these people. <laughs> Sorry, what you said? There is no alternative way to decrease taxes in that way. If any assets will be privatized in the world. I, I deal a lot with the state-owned Chinese companies. All of them think in a very capitalistic way. They think about their terms, they think about the profits. They do not care about social responsibility in much lesser way than many American and European companies. This is a state-owned companies which work for the state. They make money. This is good. They pay taxes. I, I thought we moved beyond saying that the opposite of capitalism is socialism. This is not what the argument is about. By the way, paying taxes is good. I think we should all pay taxes. We shouldn't. Well, does everybody put pay their? But does everyone taxes? pay their fair share, Jim? Wait a well, how much did, Mitt, Russia, how how much did Mitt Romney pay in last ten years? Russia, the fair share is thirteen percent. This okay, is we don't know. Rich don't on. like wait to talk wait about wait it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Peter. Are you a better judge of spending? How to spend your money? Or is uh, George Bush? Or is uh, Barack Obama? Three people. Who is the best choice of how to spend your money? You. George Bush or Barack Obama? Well, first of all, I never have a say in it, and I think the system is rotten on both sides. So you don't, you don't think you should, you should just give them the money to the politicians to say, spend my money, spend my money? I think money, rich people should pay more money, yes, Stupid. I do. And I think middle class people should be given well, a break. When, what's wrong with Why, you having more money? Why don't you have more money and spend it yourself instead of letting George Bush spend Because it? someone needs to build the road so that you can drive your car. Because someone can build the Because we all built it. We all built it. Someone okay. can provide security so that you are safe. So that the American, the American that is military, not provided by Coca-Cola or Jim Rogers. So the American military has 1,000 bases around the world. So my taxes have to go to George Bush so he can send 1,000 so military bases well, around the world. At least I agree with you. I, I agree do. with you. That's your democracy says you should be the most powerful military in the world. And you choose that government. I don't see Americans saying we should diminish our army. In fact, you go around saying we're tough. That's your Wait national minute, policy. Are you listening? Well, Maybe you haven't been paying attention. Maybe I haven't been making myself clear. clear. And the moment, uh, the moment America believes it's weaker, it flexes its military muscle. That is your problem, and you've got to solve it. No, okay. unfortunately, well, I don't know if we're going to solve capitalism and American militarism on, the, on this panel. Okay, question. Yeah, uh, Tamar Zawaski from Hong Kong. I, I think, I think Can you, you stand up, to, please, sir? Yeah, I think you don't need to give uh, like money to poor people or, or, or poor societies. What you need to do is you need to, to, to engage them. And that's what like, like, uh, like some great NGOs are doing here in Asia. I interviewed some of them in Thailand, in Malaysia, in Indonesia. What they do, they say to the community, if you want like, like better housing, like first raise some money, save some money, and then we give you the rest. So they, that, that you appreciate what you have uh, and what we're okay, giving you. Jim, what do you think of micro? Finance. Micro? Finance. Mi micro uh, Finance, loans? I mean small ones. Well, there have been so many scandals and so many losses. Yes, the first guy got a Nobel Prize. Since then, it's been corrupted, corroded, and it's been a disaster. Now people are going to jail. That, that is an absolute exaggeration of what microfinance is. Sorry, with all due respect. Wait, wait what, what, did I, what did I say that was factually incorrect? Are there not people going to jail because of microfinance? Yeah, but the bankers just haven't gone to jail. At least the, 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 the microfinance people who have broken the rules have gone to jail. But to suggest that microfinance is corrupted all around the world, it's a great, great, I great I said the first guy got a Nobel Prize. And the Since others? then, it has become very oh, you, corrupt. You should do a lot more work on microfinance. The question is not whether it's corrupt. Hold on. The question is expensive finance or less expensive Complete finance. This is a wonderful concept. So is Christianity. I think you might need microfinance and finance in Europe, right, to get us back. Are you suggesting <laughs> microfinance is no place in the world? I didn't say that. Be attentive. What I said was the first guy did a good job, and there are good people doing it. But it's like everything else, whether it's okay. religion, politics, education, okay. it gets corrupted and enough. corroded. That's fair enough. But it plays a very important role for those who are interested because it's in, in the world. It, because in a competitive market, it has all right, a, a All right, place gentlemen, in the marketplace. gentlemen, this is, I got exactly what I wanted. I hope you did too. I want to take a poll of the audience again. Has anybody changed their mind? Okay, I'll ask the question. Has capitalism lost its compass? Hands up. Wait, are you the, you're the smart people in the audience. <laughs> and so everybody thinks to reverse? Just the opposite, put your hands up. 
Uh, well, I think at least those in denial. I think at least we entertained you here. Okay, uh, it's the same amount here. Uh, th um, that's it from our debate here at APEC 2012 here in Russia. Many thanks for your questions and taking part, and please join me in thanking our distinguished panel right here. It's goodbye from me, Peter Lavellan, and everyone else here at the APEC Summit in Vladivostok. Thank you very much.